Congress is rushing to finish its business and get home for Christmas, but first they're trying to work out a compromise to extend the payroll tax cut next year. And so far, there's no deal. One of the key players in this political drama is Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell, who joins us now from Louisville. Senator, the, the House is expected to pass a bill this week that would extend the payroll tax cut, but would also link it to uh, further action, try to move up uh, work on the Keystone pipeline, oil pipeline. Uh, your number two, Senator John Kyle said this week, the package that comes from the House is it. I don't think there is any further negotiations. Question, is that your position on the House bill, take it or leave it? <clears throat> Well, if I could just briefly say the reason we're having to deal with these uh, emergency measures like extending the payroll tax holiday for another year is the president's policies all put in place for the first in the first years of administration when he had a completely compliant Congress have completely failed. Uh, they ran the debt up uh, 35 percent. Uh, unemployment basically hasn't budged. It's now at 8.6 percent. So that's the reason we're discussing these kind of temporary measures. So let's take a look at it. Uh, I believe that we should extend the payroll tax holiday another year, avoid a tax increase on working people for another year. I also agree with Senator Reid, my counterpart, uh, that we ought not to do it again next year. Now, we know that's an emergency package coupled with an extension of unemployment with some reforms. But at the same time, Chris, we'd like to create some jobs. And so we have the Keystone Pipeline in there. It it's a shovel-ready project, the biggest and most important ready-to-go project in America, wouldn't cost the government a penny, not one penny. Three years of environmental studies have already been done. The Secretary of State was ready to sign off on it. The President right. pulled it to the White House and delayed it for a year. This would create 20,000 jobs almost immediately, ready to go with no money. We also have a it, provision in there. If I may, sir, could, could I, I just I, make I, one I, other well, point? Well, we just have limited time. I just want to ask you, though, to, if I may press yeah. my question, do you agree with Senator Kyle that uh, there's no further negotiation? The House bill, if it comes out of the House, gets to the Senate, take it or leave it. Well, we put together a package that's very balanced. We believe it'll pass the House on a bipartisan basis and pass the Senate on a bipartisan basis. I was about to tell you one of the reasons it will is there's another provision in there stopping an EPA regulation called Boiler Mac. Uh, which a lot of people haven't heard of, but Senator Mikulski and Senator Wyden and Senator Nelson in the Senate also support stopping EPA from doing that. That will save a lot of jobs. So what we've done here, Chris, is work very hard to put together a package that actually both sides can support. Well, uh, Senate Democratic Leader uh, Reid says there's no chance that the House bill with the Keystone Pipeline in it will pass. <laughs> Uh, the Senate. He says that we will not pass the Senate. And here's what President Obama said. Any effort to try to try tie Keystone to the payroll tax cut, I will reject. Question. If the millionaire's tax that the Democrats want is a non-starter from your point of view, <laughs> and if the, the, the Keystone pipeline uh, is a non-starter from their point of view, Where's the compromise here? And what are the chances that a deal will be worked out before more than 150 million Americans get a payroll tax hike? Yeah, I, that isn't, that isn't going to happen. And obviously, we'll reach an agreement. The president is posturing here. He, he's, he'd have to stand up to the AFL-CIO. I'm on the same side as Jimmy Hoffa and the AFL-CIO on this. The Teamsters and the AFL-CIO want the Keystone Pipeline, want it now. Look, the president's been talking about creating jobs. This, this is ready to go immediately. All it requires is his sign-off. And with regard to Senator Reid's comments, I'm sure he hadn't checked with his own conference. There are a significant number of Democrats, senators, and House members who are going to support this package. You, this has you, bipartisan it, support. When you said, Senator, that isn't going to happen, I just want to make sure you're saying that, uh, that the payroll tax cut will be extended. Well, well, of course. I mean, it has bipartisan support. But we also need to have something in there that prevents the loss of jobs and something that will create the jobs. And that's why we inserted Boiler Mac, supported on a bipartisan basis, and the Keystone Pipeline, supported on a bipartisan basis. One would save jobs, one would create jobs right now. So why not have some balance rather than have the whole package designed to help those who are unemployed 
or preventing a tax cut on working Americans. Let's have something that actually produces and saves jobs. So we put together a bipartisan package that I think is going to enjoy pretty strong support among a lot of Democrats in the Senate. Well, you, you, you talk about uh, support, bipartisan support. Aside from the merits of the argument, the president and Democrats mm -hmm. seem to feel that they're winning this political argument. And the president made the point this week. Let's watch. I know many Republicans have sworn an oath never to raise taxes as long as they live. How can it be that the only time there's a catch is when it comes to raising taxes on middle class families? Why are so many Republicans, <laughs> why are so many Republicans, including more than half of your Senate Republicans, uh, why are they voting against extending the payroll tax cut? Well, on the president's comments, it's hard not to laugh because four out of five of the people they're targeting, the rich people they're targeting, are actually business owners who create jobs. Look, we're not here to defend high-income people. In this bipartisan package that we're, that we're just discussing, we make sure that millionaires don't get unemployment and don't get food stamps. Uh, we freeze the pay for members of Congress and for all federal workers, continue to freeze the pay that has been frozen. This is a very balanced package. It doesn't do anything uh, for millionaires. In fact, it goes after them but, but, on but, the benefit but side. But, Senator, if I may, 26, more than half of your Republicans didn't vote against the Democratic plan with a millionaire tax. They voted against your plan, the Republican plan that didn't have a millionaire tax. They were against extending the payroll tax cut. Well, the, there, there will be another package put together that I think many of them will find much more attractive because of the additional pay fors and job creating uh, elements that I've been describing to you that we have put in the package that will come over from the House, I believe, on a bipartisan basis. Well, let me switch subjects on you. This week, the uh, Senate Republicans blocked the nomination of Richard Cordray uh, to run the Consumer Financial mm -hmm. Protection Bureau. Uh, what's your problem with an agency that would protect consumers from mortgage lenders, from debt collectors, and student lenders? Yeah, here's the problem. This new agency answers to no one, absolutely no one. Another unelected czar. We've got a bunch of those in the White House. We don't need any more of them. And the only way we can incentivize the administration to change this agency, which isn't subject to oversight by Congress, doesn't get its money from Congress, answers literally to no one. It's one individual who could bring down the banking system in this country if he chose to. He says, unlimited power. No, no one has that kind of power. So what we're saying to the president is, join with us and reform this agency, make it accountable to someone, the people elected, the Congress, uh, for its funding and for its oversight, and then send up somebody and we'll be happy to confirm them. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Cordray personally. This is about an unaccountable, unelected czar. And we're simply not going to appoint him or uh, uh, confirm him or anybody else uh, to this agency that shouldn't exist in its current form. What do you think of Attorney General Holder and the way his Justice Department has handled Operation Fast and Furious? Well, they clearly aren't being forthcoming. I, we believe the Attorney General uh, misled Congress. Uh, more specifically, we believe the head of the criminal division misled Congress. I don't know what they've got to hide. Congress has been asking for information. They ought to turn it over. Uh, it, it, it's it's really quite unusual to, to be stonewalled like this by such uh, uh, high members of the administration. I would just want to pick up on that because that's a fairly explosive charge. You're saying that you believe the Attorney General knowingly misled Congress? I don't know whether he knowingly did not. We, we believe he was not particularly truthful with Congress. We believe the head of the criminal division clearly has misled Congress. Why, why would they want to do that? What, what is the point? What are they hiding? They ought to be completely transparent about this uh, particular operation. Uh, it's become controversial. I can understand it's embarrassing for them, but I think misleading Congress is not a great way to go. So the obvious question is, do you think that Eric Holder and Lanny Brewer, the assistant uh, attorney general that you were talking about, do you think that they should either resign or if they fail to be fired by the president? Hey, look, I'm not calling for anybody's resignation today, but I'm calling for them to, to be more forthcoming, to be more accountable, to tell us what happened. That's what we've been asking them to do, and so far we haven't gotten straight answers. 
Senator McConnell, we're going to have to leave it there. We want to thank you so much for coming in today, sir, and we'll stay on top of all these stories. <clears throat> thank you.